everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Networking and Marketing Made Simple. Super excited for today's episode. Obviously, I know you are all as well. This is another interview episode where we can highlight another great entrepreneur, business owner that's doing great things for uh, a ton of people, helping them grow uh, and become profitable. And the guest that I have for you today um, not only helps uh you know, small and mid-sized companies grow, scale, generate more revenue. Um, but she actually runs a business consulting company that has business coaches that help people in all the different bottleneck areas of their business, the kinks in their hoses, the, the reasons why they're not growing. So we're going to talk about all that and more. So Rola Diab, welcome to today's episode. Thank you so much for having me. So before we dive into everything that you're doing right now, uh, the one the, the question that I love leading off with is if you can go back in time and rewind the tape and stop at a pivotal point in your life, or I would say a catalytic moment in your life where, you know, the parting of the Red Sea type moment where it kind of just hit you right in the face and it led you on this path that you're now currently on. What was that moment for you? Wow, there's been a few actually. Um, I were I was in business development for a long time, working for different companies, and I always wanted to work for myself. I always had something on the side I was working on because I knew ultimately that I needed to kind of pave my own way and and control how much money I made. So I was working for a uh, company that ended up selling. And when it sold, I needed to figure out what I was going to do next. And it just seemed like the, a natural process to move into sales training. That's how my business started with as a sales training company. So I went through the Kellogg sales training program, created my intention selling program and started taking on clients and I'm a natural salesperson. Um, somehow I, I'm good at getting people to, to buy into whatever it is that I'm into. And I, I got really significant clients like Principal Financial, Calm Data, and it happened very quickly. So it just really progressed from, you know, consistently working for different companies. And I did well as in sales, right? Like I typically was at the top of my field in different companies. Not to say I always was, but pretty consistently. So there's obviously the ebbs and flows of businesses that you've got to take into account, but really it was the sale of that company that finally got me to say, stop what you're doing, don't take another job, go do this on your own. And um, the, obviously being a business owner, there's ups and downs and there's moments where you're like, oh my God, this is so hard. But for the most part, I would say I, I, I haven't looked, I wouldn't say I haven't looked back, that wouldn't be completely accurate, but I definitely feel like I made the right decision. Well, it's the best kind of hard because, you know, we don't want an easy path. Something that I always say is that none of us were born for mediocrity. We were all born for greatness. And, you know, we, we call that, I guess, the uh, the kicking out of the nest moment where, you know, you had no choice. It wasn't your company. So if the company was going to sell, you know, right. Rola then had to figure out what she was going to do. And I think the art of sales, it's not so much being a great salesperson. I think it's being a good people person because Absolutely. when you're a good people person, you do the most important thing in life and in business, you listen. Right. And what I always go back to, we have two ears and one mouth for a reason. So when we listen more and we talk less, uh, you end up hearing the problem that someone is having. You can provide the solution that solves that problem. And then you can then paint the picture of what the result can be. So Transitioning from working for that company to then going out on your own, what was the the hardest lesson or the biggest learning curve for you as now the business owner yourself um, that you didn't really know you would have to grow through or go through that shaped uh, who you are today and obviously the company that you're running today? so many times, right? We started as a sales training company. COVID put a pause on that and came right back into uh, sales, but developed into leadership development training because that would already started happening prior to COVID. So jump. I licensed for our coaches and that's based on profitability. 
And that program really advanced my business. And what really stood out, it's one thing to have a great product, have you know a great personality, really good with people. When you have the right messaging, no matter what you're what you're selling or doing, that that intro messaging is so vital to a business because the intro to you and your business, that was such a game changer for me, because. I mean, being in sales, you're always presenting your, you know, you've got your elevator pitch, you've got all these things. And, and I, my program is intention selling. So we're leading with intention and that creates, you know, a delivery that, that, you know, will shift your tone, your, your energy, a lot of things shift when you come with a certain intention. So when I realized, and we teach this to our business owners, how important that market dominating position, that messaging in the beginning is to be really unique and different. And if you're not, you have to strategize to get there. That was such a big lesson for me because when I started implementing our profitability coaching, which our messaging, I don't, I don't know if you know this, but our messaging is that we can show a business owner how to add a minimum of $100,000 to the business before they, they add or they spend money on additional marketing and advertising. And I can typically show them how to do that in 45 minutes. Nine times out of 10, if I tell that to a business owner, they're going to sit down with me, right? Like, and I can say that because I have software that allows me to do that. I didn't have that before, but that's the unique positioning, right? And if I didn't have that, I'd have to find something. So for me, if I were to give advice to any business, anyone starting off is find that unique piece for yourself, whether you're a business coach and you need to find or whatever business, find what it is that's truly unique where you can message it because that's what makes the biggest difference. I love how you label things as, you know, intentional, because mm -hmm. without specific intention, you're not going to get a specific result. I think the problem right now, whether someone is running an online business or a brick and mortar, is their vision is clouded, right? They, they focus on one thing one day, another thing on another, you know, shiny objects are everywhere. They're buying this course, they're doing this. But when you have that intentional focus of the goal that you want to achieve in your business, you know, with intention comes action. And when you take action, that's what actually produces the result. So with that being said, you know, now doing everything that you're doing with all of the, the business owners that you're helping, if you had to put your thumb on a consistent theme of a bottleneck or an issue that these business owners are having, what, what has been the glaring thing that's been staring back at you that you've been helping them solve outside of obviously increasing their revenue? It's always about focus. There are so many things that they're distracted by. They know they need to do all these different things. And then, okay, where do you start? And if you are the most organized person ever, you may be able to get to it, but there's something to be said about accountability. There's so many studies done on the accountability, like having an accountability partner time, place, and it gives you a 90 95% success rate. So think about coaches. What are we? I mean, we're, yes, we're helping them with the strategy and everything else, but we're also holding them accountable week by week to actually get this done, right? And so even if they know what to do, it's like, yes, I need to get to that, but I've got so many other things I need to do. And then that fire hydrant's going off, right? Like you, you follow the fire versus really completing what you know is going to help you in the long term. And some of those things are, can be tedious. Like working on an MDP statement can be very tedious, right? It can take months. I've been working on one with one a technology company that's been taking a while. We come up with it and we kind of shift it. And it's been like ongoing change. So it's really having the focus to get something done. When you have focus, you can do anything, but it's obviously it can be very challenging. So having core values in, in life and in business is very important mm -hmm. because they end up becoming your North Star and the things that you kind of look to and focus on. If Rola was to think about her core values that really make her unique and different from other people, not only in your profession, in your industry, but as an individual, what would you say your biggest core values are and why? Having um, an understanding of uh, discovery versus judgment to look at something when, when a client, and this is so important um, because people feel it. And, and I don't just do this with clients. I do this with people in general in life. I hear something that maybe someone else might say, oh, 
that's effed up or <laughs> whatever, right? Like they're, they go immediately to judgment. And I typically will go to, that's interesting. Like my responses typically are, that's interesting. And, and I want to understand versus jump to judgment. And that's so important when it comes to our clients, because they're going to go through so many challenges. They're going to have moments where it's like, you know, they're like really getting in their own way and they're not achieving to the extent like maybe we think they should, right? But it's really important to just stop and say, okay, this is interesting. Let's understand why is this coming up and why have you not been able to implement? Why are we two weeks in and you still haven't done the same task you committed to doing two weeks ago? And it's not a major project. It's one thing to help move the needle, right? And so things like that. So I would say that as a core value is come from that positioning of, of understanding versus judgment I, that is probably my number one. And then to have patience. I mean, to always lead with patience um, because, you know, again, we're on different timelines and it's important to understand that everybody has a different timeline and we all learn differently. Um, I would say those are probably my top two. And there's a third one I can't think of right now. Well, you can always throw it in if, if it comes to mind, but okay. I, I patience is a virtue. I think for me, um, becoming a parent taught me a new meaning of patience. Oh, I bet. Because when you're in charge of another human being and, you know, kids push you, you know, and yeah. um, our son's 10 now. So, you know, he's, you know, becoming more of an independent person, independent thinker. So it, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting thing, but, you know, having patience is everything in life and in business. Yeah. So, you know, personal development, no matter what the business model, no matter what someone is doing, uh, it's always important to self-educate ourselves, to learn new things. You know, the teacher is always the student because we're always looking to grow and expand. The The peak of one mountain is the valley of the next. Is there a book that stands out to you as something that really helped shift your mindset, start thinking differently, that if someone was to say, Rola, you know, what book would you recommend that that I could read each and every year and I'm going to take away something different each time? Oh, I don't. So I always um, think of this book because it's such a huge impact on me, but it might be taken the wrong way. Um, I'll share it anyway. <laughs> Conversations with God was such a huge impact on me. I mean, it really changed the way that I think about the world and even just the basic concept of time, how time doesn't actually exist. Time is something man created to measure change. Everything's actually happening at once, but we use that to measure change, right? For me, that was a that was a life changing book. Now, now if we went more business, um, God, the list is long. Um, traction for operations, scaling up, like you know, all all the typical business books that we we might reference. And then I I love all the self development stuff. I'm I'm certified through um, one of Tony Robbins's coaching companies, so I love everything Tony teaches and I apply it in my training, six human needs psychology being something that's, you know, life-changing. If anyone wants to learn something that will change your life today, I would say just skip everything else and go learn about six human needs psychology. You can apply it to your relationships. You can apply it to your work. I'll sit down with somebody in one session, use that strategy, and I've shifted them in a session. So it's really powerful. I would say just, you know what, start there. Start and stop there. <laughs> <laughs> What's something that you've learned about yourself through this entrepreneurial journey that has been kind of like a the, the big needle mover for you? And, you know, how have you surprised yourself through the journey that you've been on? Oh, God, I hope this doesn't sound bad. But I would say that I, uh, <laughs> I've decided that I'm smarter than I thought I was. <laughs> and, and sometimes we complicate things that aren't complicated. We have an impression of something being so hard, like business can be hard, but it's simple, right? And that's the crazy part. It's actually quite simple to implement like operations, simple. Um, strategy is simple. Like all the things that we implement into a business, sales is simple. All the things are actually simple. What makes it hard is our psychology. So that to me was was fascinating because I started learning about strategies in business that I hadn't been exposed to. And I was like, oh, I thought, you know, all these other people were so much smarter than me because they knew things that I didn't. And then I started learning them. I'm like, this is actually not hard. <laughs> so yeah, that would be it. 
And there's there's nothing wrong with letting people know that you're you're smarter than you thought you were because I think again as an entrepreneur I can totally relate to that because you know I was kicked out of the nest at 19 um, you know in a in a six month time period I failed out of college and my dad went to prison for two and a half years um, I did end up going back and finished at, at Temple University did graduate but I learned more in the real world. Uh, about myself, but also about business than I could have learned in any um, school course that I took at university. And that's not to put down the educational system. I, I think there's a, a big difference between educational smarts and real world smarts. And when you're in that real world and you're learning from the grassroots, the foundations, the infrastructure of how things are done, to your point, you end up surprising yourself because I don't think any of us really know uh, what our potential is. My, my wife did a, a YouTube video the other day about how we're all magic. And like, we all have this special something inside of us and we all do different things and accomplish different things. And we continue to not only surprise others, we end up surprising ourselves, which is really fun because we get to share that with people and they get to see all the things that we're doing. Right. Now, obviously they're coaching and consulting, you know, running the company that you're running is just, it's a vital aspect to helping those small and mid-sized businesses grow and scale. Because again, having that outside but inside perspective of what needs to be shifted, what needs to be changed. Again, going back to that that word bottleneck, my wife always talks about, you can't see the, the label from inside the jar. You know, how different is and and what makes your company stand out from a coaching and consulting aspect um, that helps these small and mid-sized companies compared to some other people in the space? Well, I think for us, we I mean we label ourselves as profitability coaches and consultants, right? We focus on profitability, and that's honestly what makes us stand out. Um, we have incredible software that helps us manage and and kind of predict what small incremental changes are going to, how they're going to affect different aspects of the business based on, you know, there's compounding effect that we take into account. And we look at these different strategies, but all based on small incremental changes. So I, from what I've seen of business coaches, a lot of what's out there is really focused on like branding or messaging, which we, of course we do that because it's important. Um, but we're we're also incorporating strategies, and we're also teaching our clients how to create a PNL, how to create a cash flow sheet. A cash flow sheet being so important for a business to know. Well, I actually don't have fifty grand. That's the money I made. I actually have ten grand, right? Because there's all these, you know, things that are coming in and out of that account. Like it's it's really interesting unless you take the time to develop that. And, and it's not hard to learn simple formulas, but once a business owner learns the math, the financials, that's probably the biggest game changer. And I think most people are typically afraid of working on that. And it's probably the most, the easier of the options because it doesn't require any creativity at all. It's just a formula. And for whatever reason, we tend to be resistant when it, resistant when it comes to math. And I'm God, knows that, you know, math was not my, my favorite subject, but to really embrace that, to say, you know what, I'm going to conquer this and really understand the financials because that is so empowering. And, and that was part of my journey of realizing, oh, you know, this isn't as complicated as I thought it was. It's simple formula. So I would say that really helps us differentiate ourselves from the perspective that we're able to teach, like take the time to teach our clients and get them over else. So for those that are watching and listening to this from a ideal client avatar standpoint, um, if this message and what we're going over today is really sitting with a certain person uh, mm -hmm. who's listening and watching this, who's the best fit for your company and what you guys do? And um, if the person is the best fit, what's the best way that they can find out more about you and, and how you can assist them? So uh, we're kind of across the board. I mean, all my coaches take on, like I have one of our coaches is um, she specializes in her niche is in dentistry. So she's working with all dentists. She's a dentist. She has her own five clinics, right? So she manages a bunch of 
um, dentists. So it depends. I can't speak for all our coaches. Uh, we do take on small like solopreneurs. Uh, ideally, we're looking at over a million dollars, I would say around two to 10 million. But when it comes to operations, for example, I've got a $250 million company. So depending on the strategy that we're working on, we'll just focus on profitability, consulting and coaching, we can go small, like smaller clients um, that even startup clients that need help getting their company on track, like from the beginning, not waiting till later to figure out how to proper, properly to strategize. We can help them strategize and build that from the beginning so they're not wasting time and money. So yeah, from solopreneurs, I mean, I've had a client that made six figures and you know we were able to help him um but it's that's not typically our target we're looking for business owners i would say two million and up and what's the best way for people to find out more about you and, and the coaches that can help them easiest way is just find me on instagram rolla speaks my name is one l r o l a speaks yeah that's probably the best way if you're interested in either becoming a coach our coaches have tools and resources at their disposal that take 75 percent of the work away or if they want to get consulted, um, we have an amazing team of coaches and consultants that can help them. Awesome. So, well, first, I just want to thank you so much for being here today. Um, I just love the transparency, the openness, and the journey that you shared. Um, so final question before we sign off today, what does success truly mean to you? Truly success will be when I can go for to be three, but several months where I don't have to be fully involved, maybe check in, you know, here and there, but I really own my time. Um, someone else is managing everything and it's just a check-in. That's true success. The money is there. That's not even an issue. It's like the time aspect where I can like go travel the world and just, you know, check in here and there. <laughs> uh, I, I love that. Nancy and I put a goal um, two years ago to really work less and live more. And we have a strict schedule now. I mean, we have a great team behind us now, but we only work three days a week. We're off four days a week. And, you know, you compound that over a year, you know, we have over seven months off every single year. And that's gratifying just because we can be present for each other, um, for our 10 year old, and just in general for our friends, family, like we have a bunch of vacations planned. So I'm totally with you on that. People, uh, I think, misunderstand what success means. Yeah, it money is great. It, it affords us to do those things. But having that time freedom and that flexibility to do things when we want to do them with who we want to want when we want to do them um, at any given time when we want to do them. That's, that's everything. That's yeah, it's everything right there. Well, Rola, I just wanted to say thank you again so much of for being course. here today. And um, again, uh, anyone that wants to learn more about Rola from a business standpoint, if your company could benefit from her coaches and, you know, obviously how she can help you, please get in touch with her. Obviously her Instagram handle is going to be in the description. And if you're someone that wants to be a coach and maybe, you know, you can learn some uh, tools, some systems and things that are already in place uh, with what Rola has to offer, obviously do connect with her as well. So everyone, uh, in addition, outside of the regular Monday and Thursday episodes, don't forget the subscription portion of networking and marketing made simple is available to you. It's $2 and 99 cents a month canceled anytime. And to start your subscription today, that link will be in the description as well. So everyone, please enjoy the rest of your days. And I'll talk to you next time. Bye, everyone. Mm -hmm.